Good day, everybody. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday, episode 68 of our What's Up Wednesday, How to Help You Be a Better RVer program live on YouTube. If you're joining us for the first time, howdy. My name is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large, all about the Class B camper van traveling experience. That's what it's all about. I'm in my third year now of full-time living in my camper van. And um, my lighting's kind of weird tonight. I kind of apologize. I'm sitting in a different position than I normally do. I thought we'd try something a little different. Um, so I about that. But um, hey, we got some great, we got a great show for you tonight. I got some fun stuff to share with you, some, um, some history. And um, if you're new to the program, thank you for joining us. If you're a regular here, howdy. Let's say hi to some folks here in just a minute. And let me show you what the program is about tonight. We're going to start off the program uh, right away with Van Place. Uh, This channel is all about products for your van, places to take your van, and tours of vans. Uh, This is about all about vans. So uh, let me zoom in here for you so you can take a look at that. Uh, We're going to take you to Jonesboro, Tennessee. And in Jonesboro, Tennessee, I found a distillery. So we're moving up Libation Live tonight a few minutes. Then I have a van tip for you that will save you countless steps unneedlessly wasted chasing your tail. Um, at a campground. And then I have a cool song of the week for you. So that's what we're working on tonight. And I'm really excited about this. This is our Libation Live. Um, this is a handcrafted husband and wife owned uh, distillery. It's really a great story. And I'm really excited to share it with you. Oh my God, the lighting is horrible. I apologize. <laughs> Jeez. Looks like I've been, I don't know. Anyway. Um, that's it. But it's all about your questions. So uh, again, if you're new to the program, what we do here is we answer to the best of my ability. Uh, questions about any of those topics around van life, traveling in a van, camper van. It can, it, sky's the limit tonight because we do not have a guest. It's just little old me. Here's some ideas to help get your um, juices going. So, traverse, uh, uh, solo traveler, route planning, finding campsite storage, boondocking, RV brands, laundry, cook and grill. And do I have a special treat for you? Guess what I found? I couldn't live without it's a two quart Dutch oven and we're going to start cooking with this baby on the cooktop in the van. I'm not putting over a fire. I don't want the mess in the van, but I am super excited to add this tool to my uh, implement, uh, which is my, my propane grill. So we got a lot of stuff in the works and I'm just really excited to, um, to share that with you right out of the gate. Um, and uh, where am I com- coming at you from? Well, I'm coming at you from Kankakee, Illinois. Uh, Kyle and I used to live here um, about a decade ago. It's a little town south of Chicago. And that was our actual house. We ran a bed and breakfast in called the Magruder House. We had two bed and breakfasts side by side. And um, the uh, that was our house we lived in with 1892 uh, Queen Anne Victorian. Uh, this is where Kankakee is located in Chicago. And I am uh, getting some signals at the video. Uh, I, let me just check my speed quick. Running off campground Wi-Fi, which uh, is usually pretty good. Uh, this should be pretty good. Roll a bit. Um, Kankakee uh, is going to be pretty cold tonight. Um, it's going to be 29 degrees tonight, and and uh, the high day was 50. And uh, um, yeah, it's um, let me just pause for a second here. Uh, it was really good Wi-Fi earlier. Now it's not so great at all, so I apologize. Hopefully we can get through this. Uh, and uh, okay, so let's keep going. And uh, so that's what uh, looks like from where I am. And I am wondering where you're watching from. We have a lot of folks in here. Uh, we had a, a viewer from Qatar in the Middle East view last night or last week. So we wanted to get that on the map. Um, which is pretty exciting. So let's say hi to some of the folks in the room tonight. And we got a big group in here already, which is great. And we got Shirley's coming in for us. This is great. Hi, Shirley. Uh, a little early. That's okay. No worries. Ron's in the house. It's good to see you, Stephen. Uh, just passed through your town uh, last week. And uh, I surely can't join us for a toast because she's on medication. <laughs> but she's got Jesus. That's awesome. Uh, here's uh, Donna in uh, Scottsdale. That's awesome. And... Um, uh, Van Liberty's coming in from cold Michigan. Yeah, it's going to be cold here. Today. It's going to be um, 9 degrees. That's pretty chilly. I am so glad to be out of the heat, though. I cannot tell you how nice it is to be out of the heat. Um, so that is really great. Um, Dave, yeah, he's doing some free camping in Kansas. That's pretty cool. Kathy, good to see you. Young lady and Jane, uh, just up the road in Byron. Good to see you. 
Uh, here's a, I, uh, I'm the Brown in Fort Lauderdale, or I am not. I'm just glad to be out of Florida. Heat is just so nice. Um, but I'm glad you're there, sir. Here's Rich in Streamwood. That's great. Columbus, Ohio. Tim, good to see you. And Denim, uh, Suwanee, Georgia. Thanks for checking in. Um, yeah, hopefully my um, my audio will improve here. Um, it was smoking hot earlier. Um, and unfortunately, the cellular is not going to work for me in this location. So if we have a crash tonight, we have a crash on the video. But we'll keep rolling. Speaking of videos, let me show you this. And um, our video we have coming up on Sunday is going to be about a whoops, get this off, a product um, for your van. And it's uh, one of the best rugs I've found to keep dirt out of the van. Dirt stays out with this rug that premieres on Sunday, the Sunday at 5.40 p.m. Central. You don't want to miss that. And if you are continuously looking for the perfect rug to keep dirt out, hey, you might check this out because it's pretty cool. Um, we have our spring says coming up, two new questions to examine. And if you're having a good day, give it a thumb up like this little dude right here. Um, we sure would appreciate that. Guests, um, let's talk about Wingham. I spoke with them uh, this last week, and we are still a go, probably not till June. We don't have a date yet, but we're getting very, very close. So they are still a go, uh, exclusive here on Go Small Live Large. And I have two big brands, um, YouTuber brand and an RV brand that uh, we're in chat with right now to come on the show as a guest. So uh, you'll want to stay tuned for that. And uh, I have nailed this down. We have a topic change. Uh, this is with my uh, uh, friends at Embassy RV. Terry Minix will be joining us for an exclusive YouTube Live this Friday, 3.30 p.m. Central. The topic is chassis, fact versus fiction. There's a lot of misinformation, I think, in the ecosphere right now with around chassis availability, what specs are coming and going, and um, Terry's really in the know on all these things. So if you are shopping for a van and um, or you're – the owner or an embassy wannabe, or you're just curious about what uh, embassy does and how they do it differently, we're going to start talking about chassis in particular, 2.30 p.m. Central this um, this this Friday. So you don't want to miss that. And if you are, again, new, new to the program and you subscribe to the channel, uh, if you do subscribe, you get notified when we go live on What's Up Wednesday and other times like this Friday with Embassy RV. So you want to subscribe if you'd like tours of vans, places to take your van, and products for your van. So that's what it's all about here. So let's take some, um, uh, oh, one more announcement, then we'll take some questions from you. So I'm really thrilled. We just got this nailed down today. We have a van event coming up. Let me zoom in here for you. And this is kind of becoming an annual thing. Um, the dealer that I bought my Winnebago Travado 59 GL from is Winnebago Motorhomes, dealer in Rockford, Illinois. We're going to be doing a roundup with them on Thursday, the 12th of May at 3 p.m. Central. We're going to do Q and A tour some of the bands they have on their lot, and then there is a Harvest Host uh, brewery that we are going to visit uh, called Prairie Street in downtown Rockford. That's on the river. Uh, for those of you that have joined this in the past, uh, you know it's a great deal of fun. And um, this is not even on my website yet. This is just hot off the press. It's supposed to be on my website later tonight, and we'll have an event break ticket, which is free. And um, it's going to be great fun. They just really do a really bang out job out there, Mick and the team. So um, please mark your calendar for that. Okay, with that, let's. Uh, uh, it's all about your questions. Um, you got to have some questions. Spring has sprung here, um, which is maybe I look so weird tonight. I don't know. Um, so I've come up through Georgia and then Tennessee and Kentucky, and things are about two weeks behind here in from Louisville and southern um, Tennessee, I would say. In the, in the Chicagoland area. And I'm rolling into all the pollen. Oh my God. Actually, I'm getting a slight break here. Excuse me. Because um, I was a wreck a few days ago. Um, my eyes are so puffy. Any, any good suggestions for that? I would love to know about it. Um, let's, uh, again, let's look for some questions here and then we'll get our topic of the night. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Ontario's in the house. I don't have to see you. Appreciate that. Tank fish is always good to see you. <laughs> Beautiful spring day. North Carolina. Yes, I just love spring days. All the fall days are probably my favorite. Um, Paducah, Kentucky. That's just down the road. Love Paducah. I have, I have such a great time at Paducah. Um, <laughs> I'm a carpet cleaner. We used to see that rug. Um, okay. <laughs> Not a rug tonight, but um, I don't think I am. Um, so there's Orange County, California in the house. Here's Mark. 
um, who says they still have ice on the, the lakes in northern Miss, uh, Minnesota. Holy cow. Um, that's crazy. All right. So let's um, take this off screen for a second. How's everybody doing? Um, just having a great, uh, just a great day. I can't believe it's the end of April. It's hard to believe in it. All right. So let me share this story with you. Now we got a lot more um, Van Place content coming out that are uploaded videos. Um, this place was recent and really special to me, and I wanted to share it with you right away. Um, and that's what we like to do here. And if you have a special place, what you can do is reach out through my website. And if you're if you're new to your van, you just got your van and you want to share your story, we want to hear your story. If there's a place you want to take your van, you've been there and want to share that, um, reach out to the website. Uh, there's email and some other ways you can get a hold of us. And we'll get you on the show. That's what we'd love to do. All right, let me talk about this, um, this place here. This is uh, Jonesboro, Tennessee. It is the cutest little town, and um, I'm looking at screen because it's a big, let me show the, the big image here. Um, it was established in 1779. Now, some of you are well more storied on history than I am. When did the Declaration of Independence get signed? Yeah, these guys are already cooking, cooking grits here in uh, Jonesboro, Tennessee, just shortly after that thing was signed. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Let me show you a few pictures of this cute little town. Well, let me show you where it is first. That would make more sense. So right there where the red arrow is, just uh, it's about 20 minutes um, kind of southeast of Johnson City, Tennessee, also a storied um, town of its own right. That's where it's located. And if we zoom in just a little bit, uh, Kingsport is pretty storied as well, up the road a bit. And the black arrow is by Bristol. Now, this is Tennessee side of that kind of red line across the screen there. That's Tennessee below and Virginia above. Anybody know what two things makes Bristol, Tennessee, or Virginia for that matter, famous? You're probably going to get one of them and not the other. A lot of people say it's a big NASCAR place. And it is. They have a huge NASCAR facility racetrack. The other thing that strikes my chord even more so is place of country music back in the 19 late 20s uh that is where uh, the record executives started capturing these old hill tunes um with various instruments were from the bristol recordings in i think it was 1928 or 1922 one of the two i can't remember in the 1920s and um from jonesboro tennessee it's about i don't know 40, 40 minute drive maybe 45 minutes up to bristol so you can make a whole weekend or a few days just doing those those three cities, Jonesboro, Johnson City, and Bristol. And that's what I would recommend. That's what I did last year. It was spectacular. Let me keep going. Um, let me share some facts with you. I'm curious, if you've been to Jonesboro, Tennessee, let us know, and uh, we can talk about that a little bit. Jonesboro, Tennessee is the oldest town in the state of Tennessee. It was incorporated before Tennessee was even a state. In fact, Jonesboro was the capital of the state of Franklin. There was kind of a, a battle going on between um, that area north. It was part of uh, North Carolina, separated from North Carolina, and became the state of Tennessee. Yes, isn't that interesting? And Jonesboro is well known for being the storytelling capital of the world. For over 35 years, they've been the uh, a world renowned and destination for national storytelling with this huge festival. The population is 5,700, which are about the size of town I just love these days. They're big enough, got a lot going on, small enough to get around really easy, and uh, I just love a tiny town in the USA. Let me show you some pictures. This place is so cool. Um, all original architecture, for the most part. This is one of the downtown streets. This building is just amazing. Um, what you're looking at is a, uh, kind of a three-story hotel. That's the balcony there with the um, arches on it. And if you look closely, this is the porch. This was built in 1797. It's the Chester Inn. It's been a continuously operating inn since 1797. And if you read the, uh, the uh, history marker there, uh, there's been some pretty famous people on that, hanging out on that porch including um, Andrew Jackson, President Andrew Jackson, and the first governor of Tennessee. Pretty cool, right? A um, little more of the Main Street. Um, again, just charming as you can get. When was the last time you were in a lollipop store, I ask you? And this is a cool thing. This is a, a log cabin. It's a two-story log cabin. If you can read the 
history marker here. This was built in 1777. It was a mile off its current location. Uh, they preserved it. They disassembled it, reassembled it here. It's on Main Street. And um, there's apparently some ghost stories that go along with this cabin. Um, pretty amazing. And look at this. I, I know you guys have seen these, ladies and gentlemen, as you're kind of roaming around. You see these old ads from the, you know, 1880s and 90s and the 1920s even. And they're so legible, even today, you know, 100, 150 years later. And I don't know about you, but I can't get paint to stick to my walls at home base that look good for more than, I don't know, three or four or five years. And here this stuff is, you know, decades later, and still you can read the advertising. It's pretty cool. A couple more uh, images to show you here. Uh, this was Paul's Pens. This is just one of the reasons I love tiny towns with a with a valid downtown um, ecosystem is that they just have all these really cool places. So this is Paul's Pens. And uh, let me zoom in here for you one more time. And yep, I succumbed to buying a pen because uh, with van stuff, you can only have little tiny things, right? The cool thing is the barrel is made from a slat of Maker's Mark whiskey. So these are the kind of things I love to find in tiny towns. Um, not super expensive, 35 bucks. It's really a high quality pen, Parker pen. Um, but I told, I give this guy a shout out. Um, so if you're looking for, he doesn't sell over the internet. You actually have to go to the store. <laughs> That's not great. I bet you though, if you call him up and tell him, Hey, you want to order something, he'll send it to you, but he does not have an online store. You got to go to Jonesboro, Tennessee to get his cool stuff. Um, it's just, it's just the one of the reasons I, I love tiny towns. Um, so here's, here's, uh, the, um, barrel, uh, restaurant and they got live music. This is middle of the day. I don't know what day it was last week. Um, here I was having lunch, pulled pork, cowboy beans, potato salad, a Schinerbach, um, doing some channel business. The whole thing was like $18. I couldn't believe it. It was really inexpensive. It was so yummy. Um, I took out the meat with me. And uh, it was just the most fun. A um, couple more pieces of information to share with you. Um, and everybody's so polite and so friendly in these small towns. First, you get to the big towns, everybody growls at you if they do anything other than ignore you. Okay, so up the street, just across the, across the train tracks, is the Salt House, which has been restored by Tennessee Hills Distillery. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. Always catches my eye when I see the word distillery. So here's uh, inside, a little bit of the gift shop. And um, it's just the place, uh, really well merchandised. And we are going to be taking part in what I purchased tonight, which is the uh, Callahan um, <laughs> whiskey, uh, straight bourbon. I can't wait. Um, and we'll talk about that more um, a little bit later in the show. So that's kind of um, the the images. Let me let me go on just a little bit further here, and uh, let me talk about where um, if you're planning some trips this spring, this summer, this fall. Um, I would definitely put Jonesboro, Tennessee on your list. It's in the Smoky Mountains. It's a little north of uh, Asheville, and it's really easy to get to. It's a stunning drive. There's a couple of places to stay, um, opportunities. I've stayed at a couple of these. Uh, there's a KOA literally on the river. Kenny Chesney sang there in his early, early in his career. Um, that's the one that's kind of uh, um, the bottom one there, down below Johnson City. And there's a Harvest host in Johnson City. Are you ready for this? They're the brew pub of the distillery. The same couple own them. They brew beer in the brew pub, whiskey at the distillery in Jonesboro. And you can stay overnight in Johnson City. And it's fantastic beverage. And what a great staff. And for those of you that like to camp in forests, unlike I, um, there's actually a couple of forests the National Forest in the area is a Cherokee National Forest and quite a campgrounds. Uh, so you can spend quite a bit, uh, I'd say three or four or five days, very easily examining that area of the country. And there's just tons of things to do. Um, Jonesboro, literally the name of the town is jonesboro.com. So you can't goof that up too badly. Um, and I always like to give these a scorecard. And this one gets really kind of an A plus, in my opinion, because the history is off the charts. The culture, there's so much culture um, in this area, uh, the people are super friendly. The um, 
uh, whatever turn, yep, I already did it from last year. Uh, it was very safe. I'm pretty sure you can street camp in Jonesboro. Not on the main drag, but off just a little bit. Um, I did not do it, but um, I think you could do it um, if you're up for that or hit the uh, Harvest Host. So there is very good coverage, surprisingly. And um, out of four bags of money, this gets two. Um, it's a pretty good deal uh, any way you roll. Um, so if you haven't checked out Jonesboro, Tennessee, Johnson City, Tennessee, and Bristol, Tennessee, um, and if you're into country music at all, those are must-sees in my opinion. Um, so thank you for uh, indulging me there to kind of crow about that. If you enjoy that at all, sure appreciate a thumb up. That always helps. <laughs> let's look for some questions here, and um, and let's uh, do a quick survey here uh, for some questions. Uh, let's see. Kathy wants to know: Am I aware of the quality buzz? I'm guessing that's with my audio. I am not aware. Um, there's nothing really making noise in here that would come through. I think it's just a crummy apologize if that is the case. It was so great earlier. Let's improve it a little bit. Um, so it's pretty cool here. My uh, Volta warming fan is on and the Eli furnace is on because I'm plugged into shore power. So um, apologize if we're having audio and uh, the video should be improving a little bit. So we're about five, six maybe bits up so that should be good enough um so apologize for that uh, uh van liberty wants to know um who uses pens anymore uh yeah that's kind of a dying breed how about fountain pens this guy had a really nice um display of fountain pens um and i've tried using fountain pens they're just so cool they're just so impractical um but um, I was looking for a good pen, uh, one I could keep for a long time, and I'm really glad I found it. Now I have a story to tell about it. And now you know some of the story. Um, yeah, if I was having some connectivity issues tonight, I apologize. Uh, thank you for being patient. And now we've got locking screens and no audio. Oh, hi, April, what's up? <laughs> Hopefully this is getting a little bit better. Sorry, folks, kind of a rough... Uh, rough uh, um, oh, April said she rebooted. Oh, good. Hopefully that fixed things. Um, yeah, I've got reasonable um, up and down speeds now, so hopefully that is um, improve things. Um, so Fridays Forever has a, a comment here. Our tour guide for Jonesboro was Bob Dunn. He took us the top ten things to see in Jonesboro. Uh, I was curious if any of those were on on your list that we uh, showed you there. Um, that would be really. Um, cool to know yeah they have a lot of walking guides so they kind of dress in character that's sort of for the storytelling my understanding is um it's really a big event and um, i don't know when the next one is i did not look that up um but i would uh, be interested in that okay let's keep rolling forward here a little bit just remind folks that um take your questions tonight any of these topics be come of interest let us know and um, hey, stickers, we're still doing stickers. Got some other ideas that we're cooking, cooking up in the Dutch oven. <laughs> Can't wait to start cooking with a Dutch oven. When's the last time you cooked with uh, a Dutch oven? Um, so we have three stickers, and these are available. Go to my website, gosmalllivelarge.com, and um, tell you how to order them. It's super old school. It's um, it's, you send it a few dollars uh, for each sticker in a self-addressed in an envelope with a self-addressed envelope to come back to you, and um, and that's it'll really be uh, really be fun to get stickers in your hands. Um, okay, spray says we'd like to kind of play off the um, Richard Dawson family feud back in the what was it 70s? Look at this cat, kissed everything that stood still. I think it was so awesome. Um, okay, so these are two, and this is the last of this series. So um, posted in the community tab for YouTube. And one of the questions that was um, a few days ago was, when visiting out-of-state family, would you rather sleep in their house guest room, sleep in a nearby hotel, sleep in your RV, sleep in a nearby RV, uh, Airbnb property? And um, I'm really glad to say, see that everybody said 68% on sleep in your RV. And if you've visited friends or family, you know what a 
project it is to say, hey, I'm okay in my RV, right? It's not a car. It's a recreational vehicle that has all my stuff in it, <laughs> everything I need. I might come and use your bathroom for a shower or something, but I'm sleeping out there. So thank you very much. Um, next one. Let's zoom in here for you. Is um, traveling in your Class B RV camper van, would you rather use chassis onboard navigation tool, like TomTom Tom built into the dashboard, uh, using um, OS navigation such as uh, Google or Apple Maps, use an RV travel specific navigation app, use a paper map, or who needs maps when I travel? I go where the current takes me. I'm surprised that 7% said this go with that route. That's kind of cool. But most people are using um, apps on their on their smartphones, which is probably not surprising. Um, seeing onboard navigation on the chassis is kind of, you kind of scratch your head these days. Um, uh, on my chassis, my ProMaster 2018 chassis, it uses TomTom, Tom, and it is absolutely laborious to get anything out of that thing. I've only used it maybe twice in all these years. Um, so that's what we got going there. And you can find those on my website, by the way, if you want to see the old uh, older ones. We've got a whole new series coming up shortly. And yeah, by the way, follow me on, on Instagram. Uh, we, we post things there as I'm moving around more readily. And I'm sure would appreciate you joining the, the journey there. And uh, uh, let's see if we can get some more questions going here. So bear with me one second. Got a few things going. Um, so Steve has said the uh, video is serviceable on his end, so I'm glad for that. Thank you for your patience. Um, here's Mark. He says, "I would like, I like, I love the lift on your van. Really would like to do more. Uh, do that to mine too. I would really recommend it. Um, is it expensive? I don't know. It's three grand when I had mine done. It's a lot of money. Let's be honest. But um, I can't believe how it's probably the best three grand I spent in the van." Um, why? Because the confidence it gives me with ground clearance, curbs, parking stops, um, deep driveways, um, over a train track. There was one train track I, I'm pretty sure I would have had a, a struggle with if I didn't have that thing lifted. Because uh, I like to take the back roads, and those are not uh, the nicest um, railroad crossings. So if you're really serious about it, I would um, look into it. The outfit that did mine is Off Highway Vans. In Salt Lake City, a number of the folks in this audience have used them to lift their van. Um, I know Jane um, is very and Roger very uh, happy with theirs. Um, in an urban environment, there are so many obstacles that you can bang your um, your sewer uh, piping, your battery box, and if you have a Volta, because um, they're really like six six and a half inches off the ground normally. And this lift at three inches, that is a big difference. So. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at that. Tom Scott sent you that whole team there. There, it's a great team, and um, and I think you'd really, really enjoy it. How are we doing on time? Like Thirty minutes after. What time are we doing the? Uh, uh, it's been a rough week. <laughs> it's been a rough ten days. Um, apologize. Um, so Dave says Bristol's divided half by Tennessee and half by Virginia. Yeah, it's really a cool town. And when I went through last year. Um, Two different states, two different rules on COVID. It was really kind of fascinating. And the um, Tennessee side, not surprising, was a little more fun and uh, a little lightened up on the restrictions. But there's so much history. Um, and I street camped on the Tennessee side, one half block from, I think it's State Street, where it divides you know, the two towns in half by state. And, and Bristol, Tennessee is where... Um, um, Oh my gosh, can his name just dropped out of my Hank Williams uh, had his last meal before he died. He didn't eat in the restaurant, but he picked up a hamburger. Um, his driver did. And that was the last meal he ate, and that restaurant is still in business. I get misty eyed just thinking about it. And he died uh, a few hours later driving up in the um, in his Cadillac up up you know up to the next state for a concert he was given. Um, so just there's so much history there. A great museum of country music. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, it's really cool cool little town let's see justin wants to know scott what have you been using for carrying drinking water on board these days every container i try ends up leaking fairly quickly that's a beautiful question um i use three things so my onboard water is 18 gallons not bad for a van actually um i have a four gallon 
I think I did a video on it a long time ago. I've had mine for probably two years. I don't know the name of it. I don't know. Um, I would be able to find it. Uh, I got it off Amazon. It's, I don't think it's on my, my shop store. I should put it there. Uh, but it's been really, really good. If you will, um, I will take a note with my pen and I will I'll put that on my store because you should have that. What I like about it is it's really sturdy, drinking water, drinking water quality plastic. It has a really big opening um, where you can fill it and then you turn it side. So, you know, imagine it kind of this way, it's long and there's a big opening. So you um, fill it, put your cap back on and then the spigot is on the end. So you turn it like this on top of your counter and you uh, open the spigot so the water comes up out this way it's really a lovely um, tank and it comes in white i paint my black um maybe we should do another video on that it's been so long and i put a piece of tape so i can see where the water level is and uh what i do when i fill my in onboard tank i fill that tank and then on the inside of my refrigerator and by the way it does not leak i've never had it leak all the times i've been using it every week it gets used um twice a week probably fill and empty and then i have a one gallon um just like ice mountain water clear that i get at the grocery store and then i have a juice bottle that i use um that's just a crummy old you know apple juice bottle and um and i use those two so i have four gallons on the floor in the garage i have a one and a half gallons in the fridge plus my on board so i use those sources first uh for drinking and making coffee and, and then I reserve the onboard water for toilet and, and um, sink duties. Maybe shower if I'm showering and have access to those resources. Uh, um, but none of them leak. I've never had a problem with a leak. Um, I should do a water thing again because it's, it's really been a really good system. Um, so thank you, Justin, for reminding me of that. Um, I'll just make a note, Justin, water. Um, so I'll see if I can get that on my store the next couple of days because you should have one of those. And again, it never leaks for me. Water tank, water tank. Okay, let's go for that. Um, appreciate the question. Really great. Um, Van Livery's got to pay. Uh, got a comment here. So we pay so much for our coaches. That using them as much as possible is mandatory. Even kind of as daily drivers, right? Um, and I'm sure uh, there's some rising issues for some of the northern climates, but uh, um, the, the Wendlands, Mike and Jennifer, they go winter camping all the time. They use RV antifreeze to flush the toilet and they just bring onboard water. They don't have any water in their systems, um, but that's how they do it. Uh, not for me. I like cool weather, not cold, but I don't like hot weather either. So I'm, I'm pretty much a wuss, I guess, when it comes to the weather. Um, yeah, you sleep in your van. I just love sleeping in my van. Um, in fact, oh man, I should have teed this up for you. I can't get my phone fast enough. Um, I woke up at 4.30 this morning. I was at a harvest house seat. I have all my windows uncovered, which I normally do. I don't like my windows covered because I like to see nature around me. I woke up around 4.30 a.m. and out my bedroom window, I saw the crescent moon rising. And above it was Venus. And I got some pictures of it. They're not very good quality. But um, if you... If you're in a place where you can uncover your windows and just try a night with your windows uncovered and watch the moon transverse and the starlight, um, maybe sh see a shooting star, see the planets going across. Um, I think it would really surprise you how much is missed if you have to all the time cover up all your windows. That's one of the reasons I love my floor plan so much. Um, I'm not so much of an exhibitionist. I just like to see nature going by and some turkeys too and the humankind. Um, let's see, see, he's got a question here. I'm learning that even with the extra battery pack, it isn't practical to park in the sun and run the AC all day. What are your go-to locations to stay cool during the hottest times of the day? Uh, superb question, Steve. And what you're kind of referring to, I think, is uh, with a lithium system. In my case, a Volta Pure 3 lithium system, but this would also apply to the um, uh, Lithionics or Master Volt, anything that's a good quality lithium system with a big battery um, setting alternator under the hood and a good battery management system. Um, yeah, it's not practical if you're not moving. Now, if you're moving, um, I can get about 10 to 12 hours out of a single battery charge. I have 9,600 watts of energy stored in my battery. Um, and I can get about 10 to 12 hours of air conditioning, not cooling the rig to 72, 
but probably a 75, 6 or even 77. And in the bedroom at night in particular, that's where it's the most important for me. And um, if you are in the sun, you are becoming a heat sink. It becomes harder and more difficult for the van to cool down at night. So what I recommend is certainly if you have a lithium equipped coach, stay out of the sunlight. Get in the shade. I actively see parks with trees. I drive around blocks looking for buildings that provide shade, looking for parking lots that have shaded areas. I am maniacal on looking for shade if it's hot, you know, 75, 85 degrees out because it just heats the van up. If you saw my Instagram post um, a few weeks ago, I took my digital thermometer with the laser and I shot it at the sun exposed skin of the van outside. It was 130 degrees. And I pointed at the shaded spot and it was 100 degrees, 30 degree difference. And let me tell you, that transfers into the interior, I'm telling you. Uh, now, my Travato is not super well insulated. Some of the others, like the Storyteller, um, Embassy RVs are, are pretty well insulated uh, more than mine. But um, it is really imperative to stay out of the sunlight and let your van stay somewhat cool by doing that. And then the lithium uh, battery will probably run a good charge, you know, with a full charge, run you um, a very comfortable night in the cabin uh, overnight. Now, if you're in a place where you have to run the AC during the day and you're running it, at, you know, 24 seven, um, you really need to find shore power. They can't put enough juice in. Um, you can, it's just a little laborious. So let me give you an example. So the, my battery at 9,600, um, uh, watts is what it stores. If I'm doing a charge on demand stationary sitting here, it puts in about 3,000 hours or 3,000 watts in a single hour. Now I can do those back to back. So put 6,000 um, watts in, and that would pretty much fill up the battery, but that is going to deplete it because uh, the AC takes 1,200 watts in an hour to run with the compressor running. So you just learn to kind of fuss with your system. You, you raise the temperature, compressor comes on less, leave the fan on the air conditioner on all the time, don't do auto. Um, stay out of the shade, and you kind of figure out how to balance your system. But um, even with the plug in shore power in Oklahoma City, KOA, blazing middle of July, uh, compressor running on the AC 24 7, it was 91 degrees inside the van because there was no shade. Keep the cab out of the shade or out of the sunlight makes a giant difference. So there's some little tricks to that. But yeah, if you think you're going to sit and run the air conditioner with the compressor running, cool the van to 72 degrees off a lithium battery. You can do it. It ain't going to be a lot of fun. And if you're in the sun, it's going to be miserable. <laughs> Let me tell you. So hope that answers. Maybe some others have some comments on that. Um, would love to get other folks' uh, input on that. But great question. All right. I think it's about time for libation live. What do you guys think? It's been a long week. Uh, I'm going to screen here for one second. Uh, you're going to do that 30 minutes after, right? Five minutes, I'm a little late. I'm always late. Um, I think I got a good van tip for you. Um, thanks for um, putting up with the technical issues tonight. Appreciate your, your patience there. Let's get um, um, one more question, maybe. I lost my cursor. There it goes. Um, So Van Liberty has got a question here. So or comment with the new Pro Master Super High Roof chassis coming out. Are you game for a new uh, WB Winnebago uh, GL if they correct their current dumb floor plan in the GL? <laughs> um, maybe. I'm not really. I think the, the new chassis looks better. I'm excited to have Terry come on and kind of talk to us about that a little bit. We'll, we'll splash up some pictures. But all the safety stuff up front, it really does nothing for me. Um, we've had cars, have cars that have that stuff in it, and I don't use it. find it annoying in a lot of ways. Um, I'm an active driver. I've, I've used cruise control in this thing maybe three times. I drive my car. I use the mirrors. Um, you know, if Winnebago fixes some of their um, floor plan things, you know, I don't know. This one is really working well for me. Still, 91,500 miles. Um, we'll see. Um, I got people, a uh, few people have asked to buy my van. That's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I, well, I'm not buying a new van just to get a new chassis. No interest. At this point, only a floor plan would change. 
Um, okay, let's do this. Let's do uh, Libation Live. Let me scroll through to get to that point. Uh, uh, it's been a long week. Um, I got this goofed up again on my, here we go. Okay. Um, Libation Live. If you're not aware of why we do this, is because as I travel around, I find these fine, usually of the alcohol variety, but sometimes um, the food. And um, I got the idea from um, um, Traveling Robert. You know, he always has an IPA on his uh, th- on his show. He does a YouTube live, I think on Fridays, right? And I thought, why not kind of do the same and talk about where I got this, why I bought it. And you got a little context tonight with the Jonesboro, Tennessee. So what I'm not liking right off the bat is they got this cheap ass plastic. <laughs> well, let's give us a cork at least or something. And I mean, this looks like, I don't know, no good. Um, let's have a little hit of this. What I like about this is um, they, let me close it up so I don't spill it on my thing. They actually sign each label. Um, let's see if we can get this off. So you can see this. So this is um, bottle number on the batch uh, barrel. So they actually, every bottle is hand filled, number one. That's pretty cool and pretty unusual. And they are um, um, labeling each, each with uh, um, the batch and the, and the uh, bottle number. Uh, now this is a straight bourbon whiskey. Um, it is, um, uh, where's the proof on here? 90 proof. Let's have a little whiff. I've been seeing a lot of distilleries coming out of uh, Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, I was at one we're going to see, I think, next week, uh, Wilderness Trace. Oh, my gosh. Mm, that is so lovely. I've been learning a lot about bourbon and whiskey. Um, some of you are well more schooled than I. Uh, let me teach you, show you a little bit about this. So um, bourbon, by law, has to be 51% corn in the mash. That's what makes it bourbon versus whiskey. And let me zoom in here so you can see this. Uh, this is a little bit of their story. So it was a husband, husband and wife team. Uh, in 2016, they, they kicked off to create this distillery. And Callahan's their last name, hence the name of the, of the uh, distillery. And, uh, or on the bottle, really. Tennessee Hills Distillery is the name of the business, but uh, uh, they acquired the historic salt house there in Jonesboro, uh, Tennessee. Stephen and Jessica went to work with help from their family and did all the renovating, building permits, and making stills. And uh, they just did a bang up job, let me tell you. I'm just so pleased with what they did. And, you know, when I roll into these small towns, not even a small town necessarily, but when somebody puts all their energy into putting this stuff and, you know, all it takes to get a little sip in my glass, all the energy, it just, it always takes my breath away how we take that little bit for granted, right? And how much these people had to do to get this here. So thank you, um, Callahan family. Mm-hmm. That is melting the anxiety of the day go away. So thank you. Let me show you a few more things here. This is kind of cool. Keep your questions coming. I see them. Thank you for that. Um, so here's, uh, again, what we're drinking tonight, the straight bourbon whiskey. Now, the last time I was there, I bought the rye, and it was a little bit of a ball toss. Should I buy the rye again or buy the whiskey? And I bought the bourbon whiskey. I did manage to polish off what I remained of the um, straight rye, and I'm a huge fan of the rye uh, whiskey. And if you're not into whiskey, they got some other stuff in here. Uh, the one in the middle kind of caught my eye. I didn't buy it. I'm not a huge rum fan, as it turns out, but Angry Pecker Rum. I almost bought a bottle just because of the name, and I just love these labels, and they do have Spitfire Vodka, and they make gin as well, um, and a bunch of flavored whiskeys, which I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, they had some really cool stuff going on um, in their gift shop, and you can only get it um, at the gift shop, is my understanding. Um, it is kind of... Um, uh, available through some states there through liquor stores, but um, I don't think I don't think they sold it online. So, um, all right, got Van Tip coming up next. Stay tuned. This is a good one. You guys, sometimes the simplest things. Let's look at some more questions. <laughs> We're talking about coffee here. Um, so Van Liberty bought some. So here's one here. Um, 
Yes, Mark, good question. What is the Friday, Saturday, uh, Friday and Sat? Well, there's kind of three days. There's a camp out event, very limited number. And then there's a day guest event on Saturday. So um, we're meeting with embassy um, next week to go through this in detail. It's the first weekend in May in uh, Willow Springs um, RV campground in a little in Union, Michigan, which is just across the state line from Elkhart, Indiana. Uh, we'll be posting that probably within the next couple of weeks, I would think. Um, they are still embassy is still in the middle of their campus move. I noticed their address on their uh, email change, so they're getting pretty close to having this done. And um, we're going to post this really uh, very as soon as we can. But um, if you're in the area and you're planning on attending, the Saturday event is going to have the most visitors. I'm guessing probably 30 to 40 this year. Um, the campout is really limited just because of limited camp uh, space. So that's um, so watch for that. That'll be posted on my website. It goes. Embassy site as well. And <laughs> weird way this always rolls. <laughs> so annoying. Honda in Wyoming. That is so great. What a great couple. Uh, in Innova. 20C from Wyoming. Man, is it cold there? Holy cow. Um, yeah, not all. Uh, so, Van Liberty says uh, not all uh, lifting battery coaches are equal. Some only have a couple batteries, unlike Volta coaches. So, yeah, it's it, it, shop carefully. I wouldn't necessarily buy a van specifically for lithium, I wouldn't buy one without it. It would always, in my opinion, trump uh, the floor plan, would trump electrical, but. Um, Volta is getting on more and more coaches now, which is great. And they're best in class, in my opinion. We can debate that all day long. Um, but they're the fast charging, the biggest energy density. And uh, it's just, mine has just been so bulletproof. Um, so weird. Okay. Uh, Louisville. Frisco, Texas. Wow. Mark Williams. Uh, there's another uh, coachman owner that's in Frisco. That's really cool. Uh, Ron, this is, uh, Nova's are very well insulated. Yeah, they have like a... Um, is it cozy wrap? I think they call it. Um, so I think the Travato, at least mine, is probably the least insulated van. Um, it's kind of funny because when you look in the under bed storage in the cabinets, there's no insulation over the wheel wells. Um, I doubt there's any behind the walls. Um, and when I was doing some servicing of my bathroom, upgrading my uh, bathroom sink faucet situation, there was no insulation on the wheel well. Um, so I'm glad to hear that. That's really, really great. <laughs> yeah, that's a great buy on Tennessee whiskey, the Costco brand. Um, yeah, they have a cork, oh, kind of a fake cork, but yeah, they don't have this deal. Holy cow. Come on guys. Do a little better than that. Um, all right. Let me go through looking for a couple other questions here, but you guys are, whoa, look at this United Kingdom in the house. Murphy the Mutant, My Blood is the Cure. <laughs> Welcome from Canterbury, United Kingdom. Sir, that is going to be on the map for next week. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. What time is it in the United Kingdom? It must be in the morning, right? Because we're about 12 hours ahead. Um, wow, thanks for joining us. That's really cool. appreciate that. Hopefully the uh, speeds have improved. I looked and they, they've gone up. So very spotty. Uh, so Mark Williams says here, just came back from a trip to Scotland and Ireland. We were reintroduced to gin and tonic with grapefruit slice during the high tea experience. Love the G and T gin and tonic. Uh, that's interesting uh, with grapefruit. I love vodka and grapefruit. That's really uh, yummy. Um, never really had a taste for gin or tonic water though, but I'm glad you had a good time. Um, I have been to Ireland. I've been to Dublin and that's an amazing place. I've never been to Scotland, but uh, uh, just an amazing place. Hey, Murphy from the UK says, UK, we have great uh, grapefruit cider. Really good for blood pressure. I thought lemon water in the morning was good for that. Good to know. All right, let's share the van tip. We're at 10 minutes to the top of the hour. We always go for about an hour. And um, let me share this with you. So this is the van tip. And what we like to do here is just 
give you a little snippet to help you be a better RVer, whether you're just taking trips, uh, wandering around as a full-time, or just still researching. You can kind of add this to your list. And here's how I want to kind of um, kick this off. So this is an outhouse in the middle of nowhere. And how many times have you gone to the campground outhouse only to find the door was locked? But they gave you a code at check-in. So in my situation, this happened to me a fair amount. And what I did is I, let me give you an example here. So this is a KOA I was at uh, a while back. And this is what it looks like every time there is a keypad because I don't want people walking in off the street and showering, what have you. I sort of get it, but I'm sort of annoyed by the whole thing. And they, at checkout, they always write it on the little, you know, the little paper for you. And you know, this thing, right? The map. And you're like, yeah, that's great. Okay, no, no problem. But then I wander off to the shower house in the middle of the afternoon or the morning or whatever. And did I remember the code? Not at all. And it's this back and forth thing, I figured out a way to prevent me from getting to the shower house, not knowing the code, having to walk back to my van, find the code, take the code with me, punch it into the little thing and get entered into the, um, into the door. And in I go to uh, shower. Are you ready for this? It's super simple. So what they often do, they write the code on the paper. And what I do after I kind of review the map and all the do's and don'ts, I do this. I stuff it in my bag. That's where I store it. So I never have to think about it again. So I stick it right in my duffel bag. That is what goes to the shower house with me. All my toiletries, all my stuff is there. Let me zoom in here for you so you can see that kind of close. And I literally put it in the bag. And when I leave the campground, I remove it and it goes into the garbage. And I can't tell you how many frustrating moments that has saved me by just simply putting it where it needs to be because I don't need to read all the rules and regulations. They're all basically the same. And it is such a pleasant experience not having to make that trip back. <laughs> so I know it's, it's pretty simple, but um, if you've been stuck with that more than three times, um, you might want to try that. It really has done a lot uh, for me to make that much more pleasant. Um, so let's see, a few more um, questions. And then I have one more thing for you folks tonight that's not happy. Uh, well, we do our song of the night. All right. Okay, let's, let's let's look for the question here. Um, so here's uh, here's my song of the week, and this came on a playlist today. I heard the song a long time. Billy Joel, the Piano Man. When's the last time you heard that? That is a great song. That is a great American anthem, um, and probably one of the top I don't know fifty karaoke songs. Right? It's such a great singable song. And uh, we saw Billy Joel in concert in Chicago, Wrigleyville, uh, Wrigley Field. And uh, it was amazing. This is probably, geez, no, no, 10 years ago. And um, how many anthems this guy has uh, that are just best in class um, uh, songs. Anyway, if you haven't heard that song in a while, put it on your music app and uh, listen to that. And uh, uh, I think you'll, you'll bring back some memories. All right, let's read some more questions here. And so HW, HJW, do you have to weigh your class B RV like the bigger rigs do? How often do you do that? Um, I did it once when I first got it. I was just kind of curious what it was all about. Now mine weighs about a 600 pounds, pretty loaded, um, no fuel and water at me and some stuff. The, um, you don't go through weigh stations. Um, nobody's been ever asked to, uh, present my certificate of weight or whatever that thing is called. Um, they do, do give you the, the, the cat scales. If you go to like trucks, truck, um, truck stops, they have those. And, um, I'd be pressed to find mine if I even have it anymore, but, uh, never been asked for it. I was just kind of curious about it. And, um, it's good to know how much the thing weighs. Um, and I think it's about two tons, right? Somebody correct me on that. Cause when we were doing route 66, we actually were driving over bridges that would only carry so many tons and I got scolded by some of the people that were following me because um, uh, we, if we had too many vans on that bridge, it would have probably not been good for anybody. <laughs> so, um, but do that. It'd be fun to uh, just go through the emotion and get it, get, it, get your, your certificate of weight. That's kind of interesting. 
Yeah, cozy wrap and rock wool. Um, and uh, Storyteller uses a different type of wool altogether. So that's, um, I'm not sure what my Travado has. It kind of looks like fiberglass looking stuff. Um, so Mary Grant is saying that her installation, her 2022K is, is very good. No metal exposed anywhere. That's huge improvement. So um, I think Winnebago was getting some uh, folks uh, feedback on that. Um, and how are we doing on time? Just a few more minutes looking for. Um, so yes, uh, HJW, there is a maximum weight for your chassis, like uh, our larger RVs. Maybe we talk about this with Terry Minix on Friday. He's a master at this. So there's the gross vehicle weight with everything loaded. And that's kind of the, you know, the maximum of what the engine, the suspension, everything can, can hold. And then there's kind of an empty weight of the, of the vehicle itself. So those are two, um, I really don't know what they are. I don't want to speak about, uh, cause I just, I'm not an expert at, but we'll ask Terry about the GVWR gross vehicle weight, something. And, um, what, what he is super sensitive on in many RV makers, vans in particular is if the vehicle could only, let's just pick a number 10,000 pounds and you load it up with all the, the furniture and the appliances and everything and you're at 9,000 pounds and you've only got, and then you start adding the fuel. So now you're down to 500, you know, uh, 9,500 pounds, you have 500 pounds of stuff you can put in the van before it exceeds its, its uh, maximum rating. And uh, there's been a number of vans that have been pointed out that they really have very small amounts of bring stuff with you weights. Um, good question. Good topic. We'll bring it up with Friday. So join us Friday, 3 p.m. Um, 2 p.m. 2.30, <laughs> 2.30 p.m. Central. Long week. Um, this is a good idea. Uh, April has. Um, take a picture of the bathroom codes and then delete them when I leave. Um, that's not a bad idea either. Um, I oftentimes don't bring my phone in, so I just uh, use the paper method. So it's a great, um, great point. Uh, okay, so here's a couple more questions. We'll end with this. We'll end with some sad news. Um, so with great sadness, I have to report. Mary Gorell wants to know where's the cat. Um, the cat escaped. Tuxedo got off his leash when he was tethered to the vehicle, and he was really having some problems um, for the last ten days. Something changed in him, and he was he was not happy in the van like at all. Let me take a drink. Uh, <clears throat> he was just doing, he was chewing and um, he was he, on his leash regular. We went for walks, um, but he wanted to be outside all the time, <laughs> outside all night and just can't do that. And what happened is I was at a campsite. He was tethered outside. We do it all the time. Um, what was different this time was the dusk and I fell asleep in my front room here and, um, he slipped out of his collar, which he has done unfortunately too many times. And because this is technically a dog collar, the cat collar, they snap. So you couldn't put him on a leash. So once again, he slipped out, slipped away, um, gone. So tuxedo is a memory <laughs> that we will always have. And my next pet is seahorses. Uh, I'm giving uh, we were trying to make him a Luke, and he was not a Luke. He did not, as it turned out, like van life. So I hope he's happy. I hope he's, um, like I said, it's been a really tough, really tough week. Um, that's just one of the reasons. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no more tuxedo. He'll be in a couple of videos that are coming up just because they're already um, uploaded and ready to go. But uh, um, with great sadness, we say goodbye to tuxedo, and we wish him the best. And um, we hope he enjoys his outdoor living. And uh, um, he was in a you know a moderate. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He, he was a, he was an outdoor cat to start with. He was a barn cat. Basically, we tried to adopt, and then make him a van cat. And it wouldn't kind of work. So um, yeah, that's pretty sad. Um, it's yeah, it's just been a really hard work. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Um, he was pretty smart. Um, I mean, the cats are pretty smart, so I don't know. So I hate to end the show on a sad note, but you asked, I was really debating whether to even bring this up tonight. I don't want to make a video about it, but, um, but the little guy is, uh, not in the van. And, uh, so that's the deal. Um, so been a really tough week. Um, 
but you're here. And let me just say thank you to everybody. It's been a great another What's Up Wednesday, episode 69 next week. Got more uh, cool stuff coming. We got the, the rug video coming up. If you're having problems keeping dirt out of your van, you don't want to miss that. And uh, it's a really good video. Um, and there's just so much cool stuff coming. I'm just really excited for to get these next couple of obstacles in my life uh, out of the way, which is why I'm in the Chicagoland area. And then we can uh, kind of refocus on some of those other things that are more happy stories. Um, so I'm going to have an extra shot of this tonight for sure. So to Tuxedo, we say thank you for the memories. Mm. And thank you for each of you um, help drive me forward. Um, I met some of my heroes this week. Um, we're the Russos, and um, they really kind of recharged my um, RVing and YouTube batteries. Um, so a big thanks to them. And uh, okay, so until we see you next week, we'll say journey on and have a great week. We'll see you next Wednesday, and we'll see you on the premiere on Sunday night, and we'll see you on Friday afternoon for the Embassy RV Live. Until then, take care.